Good morning and welcome to the service of morning prayer for Wednesday the 29th of May. It's good to be with you this morning. I'm here at Trent University um, on a clergy conference today, um, but good to be with you for the service at Trinity Barry. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah, the Spirit of the Lord renews the face of the earth. O come, let us worship. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 20. The Lord answers you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob protects you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May you remember all your offerings and regard you with favor your burnt offerings. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over our, your victory. In the name of our God, set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now you, I know that the Lord will help his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with mighty victories by his right hand. So some take pride in chariots and some in horses, but our pride is in the name of the Lord our God. They will collapse and fall, but we shall rise and stand upright. Give rich victory to the King, O Lord. Answer us when we call. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from Numbers chapter 6 and reading from verse 22 to 27. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the Israelites. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading for this morning is taken from Mark chapter 4, reading from verse 21 to 25. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to them, Is a lamp brought in to be put under a bushel basket or under the bed and not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything secret except to come to light. Let anyone who has hear, ears to hear, listen. And he said to them, Pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get, and still more will be given to you. For to those who have, more will be given, and to those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the hardest lessons in life to learn is that we need to learn to control things we can control and to let go of those things which we cannot control. And there's profound wisdom in that. But there's a harder lesson to learn that has to do with the realization that sometimes even those things which we think we can control are beyond our control and that most of life is about living with a very light sense of attachment to what we think is ours and learning to entrust everything to God. Which is really what faith is about. There is also something very humbling about being dependent upon somebody else. There is something very humbling about realizing that we are not the measure of all things and that our true measure is found in our vulnerability. And that becomes profoundly true when we think of our faith in God. There are two images that Jesus uses in Mark 4 that play with that idea. Both of these images, light and generosity, are based upon the understanding of what God calls us to, to or gives us to be. God entrusts us with being the light of the world and God gives us with generosity. Our tendency might be to try and control the very thing that God has entrusted us to be. To put a light in a bushel basket or under the bed in order to limit its shine. Or to carefully measure out our generosity so as not to seem to squander it. But the reality is, this is not why gifts are given to us. 
Light is by its very nature, crawls into every dark crevice and crack it can find. Generosity by its very nature flows out from a place of abundance and graciously touches the lives of others without boundaries. It was in the nature of the Kingdom of God that both the intended and unintended nature of light and generosity impact those for who it was intended as much as it is for those who it is not intended. Light and generosity are not things to be contained and measured based upon our criteria of choosing because they are rooted in grace. And grace by its very nature is not determined by those who are measured as good enough to receive it. If it were, there would no longer be grace. The words of Aaron and his sons in the book of Numbers, the Lord bless you and keep you, the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, are not to be offered selectively based upon some criteria of their choosing. Their role was simply just to proclaim this reality as God's choosing. Their announcement of blessing was no more of their choosing as whether we are light or generosity of God's presence in people's lives is of our choosing. The reality is the more we control and regulate who we choose to shine on or offer generosity to, the less, less trustworthy we become in our dependence upon God and the less God can entrust to us. The more we lose control and abandon ourselves in dependency on God, the more light and generosity we bring into the world. The more we realize that we are entrusted with such things solely by grace, the more likely we are to let go and let God work in and through us in our world. Amen. We affirm our faith in Hero Israel. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. I'm going to use our intercessions for Pentecost. We pray for God to fill us with God's Spirit. Generous God, we thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask that we may be strengthened to serve you better. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We ask you to make us wise to understand your will. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the peace of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to keep us confident in your love wherever you call us. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the healing of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to bring reconciliation and wholeness where there is division, sickness and sorrow. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the gifts of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to equip us for the work which you have given us, Lord. Come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You ask us to Ask, ask, we ask you to reveal in our lives the love of Jesus. Lord, come to bless us and fill us with your Spirit. We thank you for the breath of your Holy Spirit, given by our risen Lord. We ask you to keep the whole church living and departed in the joy of eternal life. Lord, come and bless us and fill us with your Spirit. Generous God, you sent your Holy Spirit upon your Messiah at the River Jordan and upon the disciples in the upper room. In your mercy, fill us with your Spirit. Hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. We pray the Collect. Father, we praise you through your Word and Holy Spirit. You created all things. You reveal your salvation in all the world by sending to us Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Through your Holy Spirit, you give us a share of your life and love. Fill us with a vision of your glory that we may always serve and praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Just a reminder that our next men's breakfast will be Wednesday, the 5th of June at 8 City at the Breakfast House on Bayfield Street. And all men are welcome to join us for that. And a reminder that we have a regional service at Strawberry Tea at Christ Church St. Jude's on Sunday, the 23rd of June at 11 a.m. We will have services both at Trinity and St. Margaret's at 9 a.m. And then we'll join the service um, at Christ Church St. Jude's at 11, um, followed by the Strawberry Tea. And we encourage you, if you're able, uh, to come out to Ivy and to join us for our communal worship and fellowship as part of our regional ministry. We close our service. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And to borrow that blessing um, from Numbers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.